welcome to Ord's functional test automation training course. In this video, uh, we will talk about assets, one of you know, most important topics. There are four types of assets available with respect to each script. In this video course, we will be talking about object libraries. So uh, in my previous videos, uh, we discussed about what is XPath. Right, the way OATS actually identifies a particular object on a web application. So, this XPath is actually present in the Java code currently. If you see here, for a text box, the XPath is provided in this particular line. Web window, web document, form. And then input search so this entire string forms the xpath now this xpath is present in the code itself but words has given an another facility called object library where all the xpaths of the application objects that we are interacting can be stored the advantage of having these object libraries is one you can easily maintain that is, for example, if tomorrow there is any change in the UI or any attributes have changed and maybe the unique way of identifying the object in the application has changed, one can directly go to the object library and make the changes. And they need not enter into the code and then make those changes. For example, I have 10 places in the same script, the same text box has been interacted with. If that particular XPath is changed, then you have to change, make those changes in all the 10 places of this script. This is when you are working with only one script. What if multiple scripts also have to use the same object, same you know text box? So in that case, you have to open each and every script and then make the changes. So instead of that, there is a mechanism called object library so in this object library we can store all the xpaths and you can share this object library across different scripts so tomorrow if any change that needs to be done they can just be modified in a single object library that is a shared object library and then it the object xpath is reflected in all the scripts where this particular object library is being added. So earlier we have recorded a small script uh, which is without having an object library. Now we will see how it looks when we do it with an object library. I am creating a new script here. I'll again go for a web. So the base script is created. Uh, now you have to go to assets tab, select object libraries and click on add. Make sure that you are in the right folder. I want it to be created in the uh, script itself. So here if you see there is one more concept called where do you want to save this object library? Whether you want that path to be relative to the current script or whether you want it path to be relative to the repository. The advantages or the uses of these two options is if you are exporting these scripts to another party or third party who wants to use it, in those cases it is important that the libraries related to assets are placed in right locations and the relative path or the path it is saved should be intact. So if you are having any libraries or other assets which are always present inside your script, then you can keep it relative to current script. But if there are some assets which you want to be putting outside of your scripts and should be used by all the other scripts, then it is the best case to use relative to repository so that Tomorrow, even if you move the scripts to one place to another place, 
the assets location will always be relative to the repository. So you have to give a name here. What is the file name? Like for example, I'll give uh, Mercury. Okay, and I'm giving it relative to current script. The reason is I want this particular object library to be present inside my own script and I'm not sharing across different scripts. And then click OK. And it also provides a warning that if file does not exist, a new file will be created. Click OK. So now if you see here, uh, an object library has been created. If you want to see how it looks, you can click on open. There is nothing available here. And now we will actually go into the record and see how it, how the script gets recorded, how the object library is created and what this object library actually contains. Internet Explorer is launched. I'm going to a, one of the uh, sample or practice web applications for especially working on test automation. We will be looking at how to register an account. So you can give your names here. First name, last name. And then click on submit. It will take some time. It says, Dear Srinivas Putnaru, thank you for registering. You may now sign in using the username and password. Note your username is S Putnaru. Okay. So this says that actually the registration is successful. And now we will stop the recording. Now, if you see, instead of having a long X path that we used to have, we now have a special notification here. For example, if we take a text box, it says input text first name. So this is a special notification in curly braces. Oats evaluates these x paths in the runtime the first part of the expression is the notification that it is related to an object library and then comes the alias name this is same as what we have given in the assets the alias name this is the alias name and then the actual object name so like this at every location, this particular format is created to represent each object. So let us also see how it looks inside the object library. Click on open. So here are the various objects. Last time when we saw it was empty, but now we have 
recorded a scenario you have all the available fields for example if you see here web input text email so it is present in the window document form and then you have the text field ultimately with the attributes id name and index okay you can either edit it or delete it based on your requirement you can change the name or give some name which is more understandable for you so this is the uh, gui mode of representation and this is the text mode of the representation of the same object library so now the advantage is as we have created this particular file i can reuse this file in other scripts and if there are any objects which is undergoing any change i can go to this gui facility here and then make those modifications and then it reflects in all the scripts where this particular object library has been used so this is uh, how the object library works uh, in the assets in the next videos we will talk about the other assets that is data banks jar files and scripts thank you for watching the video